Well, as I said, today is International Holocaust Remembrance Day. It's a deeply important occasion which marks the 77th anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp by the Red Army. But today, as we pause to remember the six million Jews murdered by the Nazi regime, a new poll has revealed a staggering one in four Australians are unfamiliar with the history of the Holocaust. The Deakin University survey commissioned by the Gandel Foundation shows a quarter of Australians have little or no knowledge of the Holocaust. For more on this, I'm joined from Sydney by the President of the Australian Jewish Association, Dr. David Adler. David, it's great to see you. How are you? Uh, thank you, Rowan. And uh, it's a shame we have to keep discussing this uh, extraordinary and sad event, but it's very important that we get the message out and thank you for doing so. Absolutely. Well, today, as I said, is Holocaust Remembrance Day and uh, many Australians have either very close connections uh, to people who yeah. perished in the Holocaust uh, and certainly uh, all Australians should know of this. So how, what did you make of this news? Well, firstly, in your introduction, you're quite right. As outside Israel, Australia has the largest number per capita of Holocaust survivors who came here, of families that are descendant from Holocaust survivors. So it's an extremely important issue to the Jewish community. The fact that um, such a proportion of people in Australia have little or no knowledge of the Holocaust is frankly an indictment on our education system. Uh, and I think that's a powerful message that uh, we see in the trend, if you look more deeply into the study, that the younger groups, the millennials, have a lower rate than, say, the baby boomers, uh, a lower rate of knowledge. And uh, you've got to wonder what our schools are doing. Perhaps they know a great deal more about subjects like gender fluidity than they do about important history. Well, I think you're spot on, David, and I think you're right to point the finger at the education system because ultimately mm. that's where you learn <laughs> about history. And you're right, it is a savage indictment uh, on the failure of our many left-leaning institutions of learning that uh, seem to just dismiss the Holocaust. It's kind of gone out of vogue, if you like, so, they, so they're not teaching yeah. our children about it. How do we fix this, David? Well... Uh, I think that a, uh, a refocus on the important major uh, aspects of Australian history, and Australia was a very active uh, player uh, in the Second World War, uh, should be compulsory teaching. Holocaust uh, education should be compulsory in our schools. Uh, it is such a huge event in human history. It has lessons in it not just of significance to the Jewish community, but to humanity. The big message coming out of the Holocaust was supposed to be never again. Uh, never again means that we should intervene, we should not be silent if there is the slightest hint of major racist or religious persecution uh, and certainly intervene before genocide. And frankly, uh, we see an example running uh, right now in China, um, and we actually invoke the uh, never again lessons in talking about the way that the Uyghurs are treated in China. The headline statistic that you quoted of something like uh, a quarter of people having little or no uh, knowledge of the Holocaust, um, we think might actually understate the problem uh, because some of the questions, if you look at the techniques used by the surveyors, was to self-rate oneself in terms of knowledge. And uh, it may well be that if a question is asked of some people, uh, do you have excellent knowledge, good knowledge, average knowledge, below average or none, um, you know, not everyone would want to rank themselves in the lowest group. So yes, exactly. it may well be that the problem is understated, if anything. Um, David, I, uh, as a kid, I remember being uh, taught about the Holocaust and, uh, in fact, being taken to one of the concentration camps as a kid when I was living in Europe uh, and an incredibly, right. uh, you know, profound and moving experience. And the Sydney Jewish uh, Museum, and I'm sure other uh, 
uh, Jewish museums around the country, but I'm familiar with the Sydney Jewish Museum. They do a terrific job. Uh, school do. kids go there and uh, the wonderful volunteers, many of whom are actually uh, connected directly to the Holocaust, uh, take the kids around and teach them and show them the, the horrors. And the horrors are, are so, uh, well, horrific, it, it's, it's, it's impossible not to uh, be, uh, you know, be profoundly shaken by them. Um, what's your individual, uh, you know, without upsetting you, but what's, what's your kind of individual family uh, memories on a day like today? Uh, well, like most Jewish families, uh, I have had um, relatives perish in the Holocaust or escape. Uh, some people told their stories and some people were traumatised to an extent that they couldn't tell their stories. My father got to Australia at the end of the Second World War and he was one of the people who really never told his story. Um, there were other people who made it their mission to try to uh, reform and improve humanity. There was um, a, an extraordinary individual in Australia named Eddie Jakku, who survived Auschwitz, who described himself uh, as the happiest man on earth. I mean, imagine that. You've right. come through in the Holocaust and you make it your mission to spread uh, hope and positive attitude, and he died last year at the age of 101. Uh, you read some of the accounts of people who've survived the Holocaust. It is just absolutely extraordinary. Um, there are some very specific uh, aspects of Australian history related to the Holocaust um, that there was a very low level of knowledge. Uh, one Aboriginal leader here, uh, William Cooper, uh, led a protest to the German consulate in Melbourne. Uh, and Australia initially has a bit of a mixed history. There was a conference, uh, the Evian Conference in 1938, when uh, Jews were being severely persecuted in Germany and, and all the doors to uh, Jewish refugees had been closed and Australia was one of the countries that declined to take uh, refugees at that stage fleeing from uh, Europe. Uh, the Australian representative said words to the effect that we don't have a racial problem here and we're not desirous of importing one. Fortunately, wow. at the end of the Second World <laughs> War, um, the Australian attitude had changed completely and uh, Australia took in a large number of uh, refugees and survivors uh, from the Holocaust. But I, I think the only way the Never Again lesson uh, is going to be meaningful if, is if people have a reasonable understanding of what man is capable in uh, the most evil times of, of doing. Uh, education is, is critical and um, there, there is a very simple thing that your viewers can do uh, tonight, tomorrow, of course, after the show. And uh, on the Australian Jewish Association Facebook page, and you played a snippet of it uh, on air just a moment ago, uh, this morning we put up a, uh, a five-minute, six-minute video of Dachau concentration camp that was taken at the time of the liberation. And every individual who's watching, I'd make a plea, um, have a look at that video, share it. You can do your bit to help uh, education of people. Show it to your kids. Ask that it be shown in school. It does have confronting material. It is original, uh, timely uh, content uh, at the end of the Second World War. Uh, and it's only by seeing this sort of material, only by understanding it. Uh, it shows absolutely. the gas chambers, it shows oh. the ovens, yeah. uh, the whole thing. Okay, David Adler, absolutely urge people to do that. And thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rowan, for uh, giving the subject some time.